This is very important point. Sometimes it is thought that a spiritual life means uh, to retire from active life. That is general impression. People think that for cultivation of spiritual knowledge or self-realization, they should go to some Himalayan caves or some secluded place. That is also recommended. But uh, that sort of recommendation is uh, meant for persons who are unable to engage themselves in activities of Krishna consciousness. Lord Krishna is teaching Arjuna how one can remain in his position, never mind whatever he is, uh, still he can become perfectly in Krishna consciousness. That is the whole substance of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, he uh, never asks anybody to change his position. He simply recommended that you associate with pure devotees and hear from him. That's all. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never asked anybody that you first of all, just as Shankaracharya, Shankaracharya's theory is that you first of all become a sannyas in renounced order of life. Then you try to understand what you are, Shankaracharya. Uh, therefore, according to their system, anyone who takes sannyas, he is supposed to be immediately merged into the existence of God. Therefore, they address Nara. In Sankara Sampradaya, one sannyasi addresses another sannyasi as Nara. Uh, but here, in Krishna consciousness movement, there is no condition. The only condition is, that is not condition, that is recreation. Just like we have got this nice place, we invite people, please come and join with us. Not necessarily that one has to come and dance with us or sing with us. Simply if he comes and sees our activity, that is also a great benefit. Simply if somebody appreciates, oh, these boys and girls are doing nice, that will be also beneficial for him. Then gradually he will grasp. But people are so obstinate that in spite of our repeated requests, Please come and join with us. They have no time. Go on. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes this state of consciousness is misunderstood to be inertia, and one, play, and one with such a misunderstanding often withdraws to a secluded place to become fully Krishna conscious by chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. Sometimes the so-called devotees of Krishna in Vrindavan will find that they are keeping themselves in a secluded place and uh, supposed to be chanting Hare Krishna. But practically it has been seen that by such artificial way of becoming Krishna consciousness, uh, does not make anyone advance. I have seen practical. They are living in a secluded place, chanting Hare Krishna, but practically when he comes out, he is mocking. 
He cannot give up even smoking and what to speak of this material world. You see? That is artificial. Oh. This is not recommended. First of all, you become mature, then secluded place. Otherwise, there is no secluded place. Maya is everywhere. Maya will dictate, oh, you are so tired. Why don't you come out and smoke a cigarette? Yes. And he thinks he is advancing. His nonsense is advancing. No? Phalena huh? parichyate. By the result, one has to be judged how, how far he has advanced. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there are so many persons that are meditating. What meditating nonsense? What is their character? If we challenge their character, nonsense. So this sort of things will not help. Come practically forward, just like our students going door-to-door, door, chanting Hare Krishna. Ah. And people are taking advantage of it. They are hearing. Ah. So this, this process is beneficial to the public. Ah. Even a small child who joins here, he also class, tries to clap. So hmm. this Krishna consciousness movement is not to remain in a secluded place to get cheap advertisement, oh, that man is meditating. No. Go practically walk. Oh. Just like Lord Jesus Christ, he practically walked. Oh. So there is practical work. Oh. No question of going into the secluded place. Oh. We should remain in the congested city and preach this Krishna consciousness movement without being affected by this uh, contamination of city life. That is perfect. Uh, they shall not be contaminated, touched by the contamination of the city life, but it still will say they are gone with Krishna consciousness. That is perfect. Yes, gone. But without being trained in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, it is not advisable to chant the holy name of Krishna in a secluded place, where one may acquire only cheap adoration from the innocent public. Arjuna's thought of Krishna consciousness, or Buddha Yoga, intelligence and spiritual advancement of knowledge, as something like retirement from active life, the practice of penance and austerity at a secluded place. In other words... Yes, Arjuna is asking that you say that uh, Krishna consciousness is uh, very good. Uh, why you are engaging me in this fight? That is his question. So Krishna will answer this question. Uh, general people understand that retiring from ordinary duty, uh, one becomes spiritually advanced. Uh, that is being taught here. It is not like that. Uh, Krishna taught to the whole world that Arjuna was a soldier. He was a fighter. And in his fighting also he can be Krishna conscious. It is not that he has to cease from fighting and then become Krishna conscious. No. There is no such question. There is no rejection of anything, but God telling everything. That is the problem. Do everything, but in Krishna concept. If you are a fighter, fight, but for Krishna. If you are a businessman, all right, do business for Krishna. If you are something else, do that, but for Krishna. This is one. Thing. This is called Krishna concept. To dovetail everything with Krishna. Nidbande Krishna Sambanda Jukta Bhairagya Mucha. Jukta Bhairagya. Real renunciation is to dovetail everything for Krishna. Oh, that is renunciation. Oh, 
nothing than three cents that I earn whole time millions of dollars and distribute among my uh, children and or engage in some other way and I become Krishna conscious and sit with the place. No. Oh. Ah. You can begin Krishna consciousness from the very beginning. Ah. Earn for Krishna, spend for Krishna, think for Krishna, work for Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. Fight for Krishna. Nothing to be rejected. Everything to be doctored with Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. Yeah. In other words, we want us to skillfully avoid the fighting by using Krishna consciousness as an excuse. But as a sincere student, he placed the matter before his master and questioned Krishna as to his best course of action. In answer, Lord Krishna elaborately explained karma yoga or work in Krishna consciousness in the third chapter. Yes. Karma yoga means Karma means action, fruitive action. Everyone is working in this world to get some result. Uh, somebody is working in business, earning millions of dollars yearly. Why he is earning? He is earning for his sense gratification. As soon as he has got money, he changes his car, he changes his apartment, changes his standard of life, only for increasing. The whole world is working so hard, and the result is that increasing their objects of sense gratification. This is called karma. Uh, karma means to enjoy the result of your activity. And when it is karma yoga, that means the activities which, are, which is your occupation. You can engage yourself in that activity, but don't engage the result for your sense gratification, but for satisfaction of Krishna. That is called karma yoga. Yoga means to link up with the Supreme. And karma, you are inclined to work. All right, work, but link up your result of work with Krishna. That is called karma yoga. Hmm. Yoga means linking up with the Supreme, and karma, when it is linked up with Krishna, that is called karma yoga. It will be explained. Now, go on. Two, my, intelli my intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instruction. Therefore, please tell me decisively what is most beneficial for me. Yes. People think it is equivocal. I, I, I ask you to become spiritualist, still I ask you to work ordinarily, go work like this, work like this. They will think, uh, what sort of spiritual life this is? Uh, they are also earning money. Uh, they are also working in the factory or they are also doing this or that. So, to the ordinary man it appears equivocal. But it is not equivocal. That is the real process of working. Go on. Purport. In the previous chapter, Lord Krishna explained how to engage in Krishna consciousness. Many different tasks were explained, namely, Samskya Yoga, Buddhi yoga, controlling the senses by intelligence, work without fruitive desire, the position of the neophyte, etc. This was all presented unsystematically. A more organized outline of the path would be necessary for action and understanding. Arjuna, therefore, wanted to clear up these apparently confusing matters so that any common man could accept them without misinterpretation. Although Krishna had no intention of confusing Arjuna by any jugglery of words, Arjuna could not follow the process of Krishna consciousness, either by inertia or active service. In other words, by his question, he is clearing the path of Krishna consciousness for all students who are serious about understanding the mystery of the Bhagavad Gita. 
Yes, sometimes it appears to the student contradictory. But actually the master who is well conversant, he does not say anything contradictory. It is the misunderstanding of the student that sometimes he thinks that it is contrary. Therefore, the question is allowed. So I will find that a student is advised to question to the spiritual master. That with thee, uh, you should understand the transcendental science by the process of first thing is surrender, then question and seva, service. Surrender and service and question. Simply, if you question and don't surrender, don't render any service, then it will be simply waste of time. Just like Arjuna was talking in the beginning with Krishna as friend. The Krishna was talking very cautiously uh, because it was friendly talk. But now when Arjuna surrendered unto him, I accept you as my spiritual master. He is talking freely. This is going on. Ah, yes. Go on. The blessed Lord said, O sinless Arjuna, I have already explained that there are two classes of men who realize the self. The contemplative are inclined to understand it by empirical philosophical speculation, and the active are inclined to know it by devotional service. Purport. In the second chapter, verse 39, the Lord has explained two kinds of procedures, namely Sankhya Yoga and Karma Yoga or Buddha Yoga. Sankha, Sankha Yoga. Sankha means analyzing the material element and dovetail it with the Supreme. Uh, this is called Sankha Yoga. Sammak apayate. Or things are very explicitly explained for understanding of the common man. That is called Sankha Yoga or Jnana Yoga. And another is uh, Karma Yoga or Buddhi Yoga. Gone. In this verse, the Lord explains the same more clearly. Sankhi yoga, or the analytical study of the nature of spirit and matter, is the subject for persons who are inclined to speculate and understand by, understand things by experimental knowledge and philosophy. The other class is meant to work in Krishna consciousness, as is explained in verse 61 of the same second chapter. The Lord has explained also in verse 39 that by working under the principles of Buddha Yoga or Krishna consciousness, one can be relieved from the bonds of action. And furthermore, there is no flaw in the process. The same principle is more clearly explained in verse 61 that this Buddha Yoga is to depend entirely on the Supreme or more specifically on Krishna. And in this way, all the senses can be brought under control very easily. Therefore, both the yogas are interdependent as religion and philosophy. Religion without philosophy is sentiment, or sometimes fanaticism, while philosophy without religion is mental speculation. The ultimate goal is Krishna. Because mm, there, there are uh, certain class of men who are simply philosophizing. And there are certain class of men who are simply blindly following the religious ritualistic process. So, Bhagavad Gita is combination of both. That is scientific. You should be religious, but should understand everything philosophically. Not, hmm. otherwise one becomes fanatic, religious fanatic. Uh, uh. In the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, 
it is clearly said that Chaitanya Dayar Katha Karaha Vita. You people, you try to understand the gifts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by your philosophical understanding, not blindly, philosophy. And vichar karile chitte paile chamakka. If you are actually a man, wise man, then you will find it is sublime. And if you simply stick to your own religious ritualistic principles, don't try to understand the philosophy of everything, then you become a fanatic. So we should not become uh, religious fanatics, nor dry mental speculators. Both these classes of men are dangerous. They cannot make any advance. The combination. Uh, you should be religious, but try to understand each and every line. Fear them. Just like in the Bible, there is uh, the statement, God created this universe. It is a fact. But uh, because the modern educated persons are not explained how God created, how the process of creation, these things are explained in the Bhagavad. How the sky became in existence, and the earth became in existence, the fire became in existence. There is a process, general graduation. Actually, God has created the world. That is, there is no doubt about it. But because it is not philosophically explained, the modern educated person, they don't accept. So, uh, Bhagavad-gītā, you will find everything, a combination of religious sentiments plus philosophical understanding. That is one. One. He often is called Krishna because the philosophers who are also sincerely searching after the absolute truth come in the end to Krishna consciousness. This is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita. The whole process is understood. is to understand the real position of the self in relation to the super self. The indirect process is philosophical speculation by which gradually one may come to the point of Krishna consciousness. And the other process is by directly connecting with everything in Krishna consciousness. Yes, if you want to go to the uh, goal by uh, philosophical speculation, uh, analyzing, this is not spirit, this is neti neti, this is not Brahma, this is not spirit, that also will help you. Uh, but in this age, such philosophical study, not in this age, every age, that is a very long term process. But when people lived for a very, very long time, it may be it was possible to arrive at the goal of life by such process. But in this age, there is no time. I do not know what is going to happen to me just after coming out or while I am sitting in this uh, room. Uh, even a big man, President Kennedy, he was going in procession. He never expected that he will be shot, but he is shot. So there is no certainty of our life, this age. Therefore, we should take up the quick method for self-realization. The long-term method will not help us. We are not prepared for Neither. That is short term, immediate effective. Chant Hare Krishna. An immediate effect. Go on. So, the indirect, so, the indirect process is philosophical speculation 
by which gradually when they come to the point of Krishna consciousness. And now the other process, the other process is by directly connecting with everything in Krishna consciousness. Out of these two, the path of Krishna consciousness is better because the philosophical process does not purify the senses. Krishna consciousness is this philosophical process. You can show by jugglery of words your academic qualification. But it will not take you to the right. We have seen many such philosophical speculators. They are simply talking in the meeting, but that's all. And if we take, study their private character, it is less than ordinary. Less than ordinary. That will not help us in this age. You see? You may take some credit in a meeting. Oh, he's very nice speaker. So what is that? If you become a nice speaker, what will help you in your spiritual realization? Uh, this is, if you do one minute Hare Krishna, it will give you immediate reason. One second, if you chant, or hear. This is so nice. Directness. Immediately. Gone. Krishna consciousness is itself a purifying process, and by the direct method of devotional service, it is simultaneously easy and sublime. Four, not merely by abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction, nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection. Yes. Simply why it is explained. Go on. The fourth. The renounced order of life can be adopted upon being purified by the discharge of the prescribed form of duty. The prescribed form of duty is laid down just to purify the heart of materialistic men. Without the purifying process, one cannot attain success by abruptly adopting the fourth order of life. The fourth renunciation is the fourth order of life according to Vedic civilization. Uh, just like we are sannyas, so oh, we are also householder. Uh, oh, I have got my wife still living. I have got my children, but I have uh, been able to come to this stage of renunciation, forgetting my all relationship with my uh, wife and children and family and home, because. Uh, uh, I was trained gradually. Uh, I was trained as brahmachari, as grihastha, by the mercy of our spiritual master. Therefore, I don't feel anything. Uh, but abruptly, if we take to sannyas order, uh, then we have seen many persons abruptly taking, or without understanding the self-realization process, he fails. He again comes back to the materialistic way of life. Uh, in a different form. Uh, suppose he begins in philanthropic work, uh, some uh, hospitalizing or opening educational institution. That is nice. But these things are being done by the government and many philanthropic persons. That is not the duty of a sannyas. A sannyasi, a renounced order of life, his main business is to spread Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. That is his real business. But if one has not the taste, what is Krishna consciousness? Simply accept sannyas. Then he will do all this nonsense work. And, of course, I don't wish to name here. Some of our students went to a very big Swami here in New York, he found that he was smoking. And the student said, uh, Swami, we don't smoke. And he was ashamed. He was ashamed. So what is the use of taking this kind of sannyas? Sannyas means to uh, give up all material uh, contaminated activities for the sake of the Supreme Lord. That is called sannyā. Shat, nyā, sannyā. This is the uh, combination. Shat means the supreme. They were existing. And nyā means renunciation. That means one who has renounced everything 
for serving the Supreme, he is real sannyas. He may take this dress or not, that doesn't matter. Anyone who has sacrificed his life for service of the Supreme Law, he is a sannyas. That will be explained in the fifth chapter. Go on. According to the empirical philosophers, simply by adopting sannyas or retiring from spiritual activities, one at once becomes as good as Narayana, God. But Lord Krishna does not approve this principle. Without purification of heart, sannyas is simply a disturbance to the Sogna order. On the other hand, if somebody takes to the transcendental service of the Lord, even without discharging it from prior duty, whatever he may be able to advance in the cause is accepted by the Lord. Sarpam mati yasya dhammasya sanyate mahato bhaya. Salpam api yasya dharamasya trayati mahato bhaya. Salpam means very little. Api, although, asya of this Krishna consciousness, dharmasya, occupation, trayate, deliver, mahato, great, bhaya, fearful. Gone. Even the slight performance of such a principle enables one to overcome great difficulties. Yes. Five. All men are forced to act helplessly according to the impulses born of the modes of material nature. Therefore, nobody can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. Yes. Right. They say, uh, we saw one sanguard in a yogi, yoga society in Los Angeles that you become silent and you'll become God. And here Krishna says that you cannot become silent even for a moment. Is it? These things are going on. Go on. This is not a question of embodied life. It is the nature of the soul itself to be always active. The proof is that without the presence of the spirit soul, there is no movement of the material body. The body is only a dead vehicle to be worked by the spirit soul. And therefore it can be understood that the soul is always active and cannot stop even for a moment. As such, the spirit soul has to be engaged in the good work of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise it will be engaged in the occupation dictated by the illusory energy. In contact with material energy, the spirit soul acquires material mode, and to purify the soul from such affinities, it is necessary to engage it in the prescribed duties enjoined in the Shastras or scriptures. But if the soul is engaged in his natural function of Krishna consciousness, whatever he is able to do is good for him. Practically, that is real science. If you simply engage yourself, in activities of Krishna consciousness, then automatically your activities in Maya become silent. Just like the same example I have given. Here is a glass. If you want to fill up with milk, the water will go automatically. You have to throw away the water. You cannot put the water and the milk at the same time in this glass. Similarly, if you become active in Krishna consciousness, you automatically become silent in material activity, without any separate endeavor. It is so nice. And if you try artificially to stop, to become silent from material activities, it will not be possible. You may meditate for fifteen minutes, or for fifteen hundred minutes, or fifteen thousand years, it will not be possible. Uh, the mind is very strong. Mind's business is to accept and reject, accept and reject. You accept something, you reject something. The better thing is that we accept uh, something, Krishna concept, under the direction of desire to succession, and that is yours, should be the aim of life and your success. You have to accept something. You re- simply by rejecting, it will not help you. Oh. But you have to accept something. That acceptance 
is Krishna consciousness. Simply negation will not help. You must have some positive engagement. Wow. Srimad Bhagavatam affirms this. If somebody takes the Krishna consciousness, even though he may not follow the prescribed duties in the Shastra, or execute the devotion of service properly, or even if he fail, falls down from the standard, there is no loss or evil for him. And even though he carries out all the injunctions for purification in the Shastra, what does it avail him if he is not Krishna conscious? So the purifying process is necessary for reaching this point. Sanya, or any purifying process, is meant to help one to reach the ultimate goal of becoming Krishna conscious, without which everything is considered a failure. Let's go. So, any question? Any question? Meditation, yes. that you can see from the result, you will find so many persons meditating, but see their life. Following a policy affair, uh, one has to be judged by the result. You have worked very hard and supposed to be very rich man, but if I see that you have no nice apartment, neither any car, neither any opulence, so what kind of uh, businessman you have earned? That can be understood immediately. So, if one uh, by uh, practice of meditation is actually advancing in spiritual life. Why he is materially affected? What is the difference between a person materially affected and spiritually advanced? Uh, now take for example our students. We may not be very much uh, highly advanced, admitting that. But at least uh, if any gentleman comes, if he's sincere, he'll appreciate how pure they are, at least their practice. So by the result one has to see. But we have seen so many meditators, they cannot change even their daily Nonsense habits. So what results they have obtained, they have seen. I cannot understand. By the result one has to take account. Not by simply jugglery of words. Just like there is examination. One student says, oh, I have studied so much. But when the examination was taken, he failed. So what does it mean that he studied? That means he did not study. That's all. The test is the spiritual advancement means uh, minimizing uh, material activity. Bhakti parasanu bhava virakti annatrasa. Automatically they will be detestful for material engagement. Oh. Spiritual advancement means that, just like a hungry man, if you give him to eat, as, as soon as he begins to eat, immediately he feels satisfaction. 
And when he is fully fed, he will say, no, I don't want anymore. Similarly, spiritual advancement means proportionally one should be detestful to material engagement. That is the test. So if anyone is advancing by meditation or bhakti yoga or Krishna consciousness, one has to give evidence that he is now being proportionally detached from this material engagement. That is the test. This is, this is not for only the meditators, it is for you also. How far you are advancing in Krishna consciousness, you test yourself. How far you have become detached from material consciousness. That's all. The proportionately you have advanced in Krishna consciousness, the proportionately you will not like uh, material engagement. If you have advanced ten percent, then in ten percent you become detached. That is the way. So everyone has to test himself the how far I have advanced. That means how far I have become detached with material contamination. That's all. The test is in your hands. And if you are sincere, then you should test yourself. And if you want to make so, that is different. That is even explained in the second chapter, Sita Pragna, the behavior of a person who has advanced in spiritual consciousness. That is explained. You have studied. He, he talks like that, he walks like that, he behaves like that. So many things they, they have been explained. These are the tests. So we may not be able to achieve all the success immediately. But everyone should try to follow. The meditation process is also one process. That is also one of the process. That is good. But we simply say that this process is not, uh, I mean to say, very fruitful in this age. In this age, this chanting of Hare Krishna is the uh, uh, most uh, beneficial process. That is our program. We don't duplicate the meditational process. That is a process, standard process. But we don't say, we are not manufactured, it is a sastra says, and a kritega dhyato Vishnu. Meditation of Vishnu was possible in the Satya Yuga when people used to live for oh, one hundred thousands of years. Uh, just like Balmiki Muni, he meditated for sixty thousand of years. He got perfect. Uh, here, uh, it is very uh, difficult even to meditate for sixty minutes at a time. The Kritija Dhyata Vishnu, so that process was recommended in the Satya Yuga. And the next process is. Uh, Mm. The next stage, by uh, performing great sacrifices, that is very costly affair. Nobody has money. Suppose if I prescribe performance of some sacrifice, and if I order that you have to secure uh, 100 tons of butter or ghee, can you secure? Oh. So therefore, that is not possible. Kriti is a dhyatu vishnu tritayang jajatu mukhi dhapuri puritajayan. Temple worship is also not possible. Temple worship, we go uh, in India, there are some uh, temples still. Daily, they are spending thousands of dollars for temple worship. Daily. The process. In Jagannath temple, uh, fifty-six times of Art Prasadam. And any time you go, 
they will supply you prasadam for one thousand persons. It is already. Still, although India is being advertised that there is no food, but if you go to Jagannath temple any time and ask the manager that we have come one thousand uh, devotees, please supply us prasadam. Yes, ready. So that is being that the arrangement is there from since last two thousand years. The Jagannath has property, there is production, there is good management, that is going on. Similarly, there are there is another temple, Nathodva. Uh, they are also spending thousands of. Uh, in in Madras also there are many temples. There is a big state. They are also collecting money daily, four thousand, five thousand dollars. Yes, still the temple and many element is there. Huh? So that process is not to be introduced newly. It is not possible. Huh? That for Bhagavat says, "Kite jagdhato Vishnu Tita yang jagatu makai dapari parichat jayang kalo kalo meaning this is that harishan ki tanao simply by chanting." You get the result of sacrifice, you get the result of meditation, you get the result of temple work. Here we are, of course, attempting to worship Jagannath with our teeny effort. But if you go to the real Jagannath temple in Puri, uh, you'll see uh, fifty-six times. Uh, when Lord Chaitanya was invited by Sarvabhu Bhattacharya, so he gave him so much rice and vegetables and all these things. So uh, he thought it is offered to Jagannath. So he asked Sarvabhu Bhattacharya, all right, give me little prasadam from this, I shall eat. So Sarvabhu Bhattacharya says, no, you eat the whole thing. Oh, how it is possible? Uh, then he gave the example. Uh, Sir, you don't say like that. I know you are taking in the temple fifty-six times like this, and this is only a morsel of food for you. <laughs> so actually, if you Krishna, if you offer Krishna uh, uh, prasadam, fulfilling the whole hall. As many times, fifty-six times. Fifty-six times means you have got only twenty-four hours. How many times in an hour? Without sleeping, without doing anything. Krishna will accept. Huh? Krishna will accept. And I want it. You American people, you have got so much money, you engage your money in that way. Don't spoil your life by this way and that way. You can do that. You have got enough sufficient means to offer Krishna fifty-six times. You see? Just see the result. That is utilization. That is karma yoga. One has the capacity to earn like anything and to spend for Krishna like anything. That is karma yoga. It is not inertia. No, I have got chanting Hare Krishna. I shall go and sit down, eat at the expense of others and chant Hare Krishna. No. This is karma yoga. Pranay Ratri Bhyavata. You have to employ your life, your money, your words, and your intelligence. All for Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. If you have got enough money, spend it for Krishna. Don't stop it. The more you spend, more you become balanced less for spending Krishna, then more you are benefited. This is the path. That will be taught in the Karma Yoga section. And one can, how one can, unless one is spiritually advanced, 
how he can sacrifice his heart and money for Krishna. Uh, everyone thinks, oh, I have earned this money, oh, working so hard, uh, oh, why shall I spend it for Krishna? Let me keep it. I shall do it for my sense get This is this kind of advancement is nowhere. Yes, How one has learned to sacrifice everything for Krishna. That's like Arjuna. He sacrificed his whole family for Krishna. In the beginning he hesitated, how can I kill my family members? This fight. And when he become Krishna conscious, never mind, I shall kill all of them. This is called sacrifice. This is Krishna Kāṁsa. He sacrificed all sentiments, all connections, everything for Krishna. That is called sanna, real sanna. Although he was a warrior, a fighter, a householder, having more than a dozen wives, but he was sanna. Because he sacrificed everything for Krishna. That is one thing. That is Krishna Kāṁsa. So everyone can test how far he has advanced simply by this. How far I have become prepared to sacrifice everything for Krishna. He doesn't require to take certificate from others. He take and test himself. How far I am prepared? Then it is all right. This is the standard. Not a